Hello YouTube, Tim here, and I've got a, another Weapon of the Week build along for you. This is the remnants I'm slowly disassembling of my very rough and not very attractive first go at making a tomahawk modeled after the Connor Kenway tomahawk in Assassin's Creed 3. The basic idea was right. The execution was, as you can see, a little on the sloppy side. We're going to do a much nicer job this go around. We're going to make it look a lot more authentic. And, oh... I also removed the, the the leather here, the genuine leather, and I put it on uh, Mehmet oh, so, uh, for a friend. No, not Mehmet, sorry. Anyway, so many bows to keep straight. But this is what we've got. We're going to do something better than this that'll look even better. Start off with the blade. I'm taking half-inch Schedule 40 PVC. This is just the scrap I have. So all I did is I marked 7 and 3 quarter inches inward. Then I marked five and a half inches. Then from the seven and three quarters, I marked five and a half inches. What we're going to do is cut between here and there at an angle, an even angle. So these are going to be two equally sized pieces, seven and three quarter inches long. All we need to do now is heat this middle section and then cut at the angle. Let me make sure that we have our cutting device or everything that we'll need. We've got the heater here. What? Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll try my brand new snazzy, what's it, what's it called? Not a scalpel, but an exacto knife. We'll, we'll see. But the point is we want it to be nice and even so it's fairly close on both sides. You can always go back and we're going to shape it a lot so you'll have a lot of room. These are just for the side portions. We're going to cut another portion later. This is a lot more involved than the way I did it before and you could do it simpler but this is just the way I'm trying to do it. The first improved version, let's say. So we're heating the middle. You're going to want to heat a little bit beyond these areas, not too much, but a little bit, just so you can get some purchase with your cutter. If you're going to saw it, that's probably the easiest. If you put it in a miter block or something, that's fine. But again, you want it to go between the five and a half and seven and three quarter inch. These are going to be the angled back parts that are supposed to mate. Rather, they meet in the back. So let's try it right now. Once we start, that should be pretty easy. And it is. Great. Not 100%. Ooh, the mind boggles. This actually could be a neat way to cut for other, other purposes. Nifty, look at that. That does look like bamboo. Anyhow, the point is, when we're done here, we'll have two nearly identical pieces that we're going to flatten and then piece together like this. You see where I'm going? Then we're going to have another piece, which will be shaped into the front part, making the Assassin's logo. That's the whole point. What we're going to do with the handle is just take a three-quarter inch section of PVC. This is long. I'm going to end up probably chopping a good six inches off of this so that it's the same size as this. This is approximately the same size as the replica version you can buy online. So see right to about there. We're going to cut it off to about there. The measured length, if you're interested in getting that prepped right now, is 17 inches, call it. When you flatten it and shape it, it should be about 16 inches end to end. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole or a slot for us to insert the uh, the haft. The haft will be uh, sort of wrapped around it. This will go through the hafting. That's where we are. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off now, and then we'll flatten them. Welcome back, YouTube. 
here we are. We've got everything all lined up and ready to go. Now let's get a little closer to the wall outlet so that we don't have any problems. Right now we have the two pieces that we cut at an angle. We have another piece which I cut. It's eight inches long. That will be curved and form the blade, the actual blade of the axe head. For the shaft, for the hafting that is, it's this piece here, three quarter inch. Everything else is half inch. This piece is 17 inches long. You can go a little longer, a little shorter to your taste. Once the ends are flat and then it's curved, the overall length should be about 16 inches. This is going to be sanded down, turned into a nice wood grain texture. The uh, Here's something you can tell. Now, I over-applied. I was trying to make it very dark, but this is what happens when you over-apply uh, shoe polish on PVC that's been inadequately sanded. That's up here. Down here is where it's been perfectly sanded. So you see in just one area to one area, good, bad, good, just depending on where I was when I was sanding it. This was a very early work in a lot of ways, and so it's not very impressive. The idea was good, but the execution was not. And if anybody saw these and was thinking, punji stick trap, yeah, I think this could actually seriously injure something. So don't go planting them uh, smeared with buffalo dung in your backyard. It's not a good idea. But let's go ahead and flatten all of these pieces out right now, because we're going to work on the half later. All I need to do is heat them, and then we've got a 2x4, which we're going to use to flatten them. That's about it. Ready? Go. For smaller pieces, I'll sometimes, sometimes chase them around like this. It keeps them moving, makes it harder for me to burn one spot, and it allows me to keep my unprotected hand well out of the way. Shooting the hot air straight down them is also a good idea. Didn't you think I was kidding about the punchy stick trap? These things are really sharp. You can also control the rolling by balancing the air force against gravity by tilting the tilting the heating channel. Either way, or just go ahead and move it. It's, it's hot, but it's not going to burn you if you just touch it for a second. All right, I think we're very close to being ready. These nice small pieces heat up very rapidly. So let's go ahead and flatten it out. Trade out these for the flattening jig. Not much of a jig. Just make sure that the, as far as you're able, the point is on one side. Okay, here we go. And we're just going to wait a minute and allow it to harden sufficiently. Something that speeds it, I think I've mentioned before, but again, it just bears repeating. Since not everybody watches all of my videos, although you should. Come on, really, they're wonderful. Uh, it's worth moving moving this around from place to place. So even though this area got heated up, the wood absorbed some heat. At that point, wood doesn't conduct heat very well. At least, you're better off just moving the jig to another area that's cool and starting over again. So it'll act as a heat sink, drawing heat out of the 
out of the pipe. It'll cool faster that way. If you're not concerned, then don't. It's not a big deal. You can even just clamp them and leave them. It'll cool more slowly, and that may or may not be preferable, just depending on your circumstances. It's turning out to be nice and even, nice and flat. I think I can take it out, flip it, take a look at it. Very good. So we're going to do the exact same thing with the other piece. See what I mean? We may end up, well, definitely, we're going to have to shape them before we glue them together. But that's the basic idea. That's what will allow us to form the, the back part in the Assassin's Creed logo, which is what the axe head really is. They join together like this. So there you go. I don't think I need to show you doing the second one, so we'll get back in just a minute. And Welcome back, be YouTube, and here we are. We now have the two flattened sides of the blade. It doesn't really matter how you array them. There we go. We're going to end up trimming them a little bit later. This is going to be the actual blade. So we need to flat curve it and flatten it all at the same time. Shouldn't be too hard, so let's give it a shot. A little bit more. Okay, here we go. So now, flattening and curving at the same time. So I'm curving it against here, and then while it's curved, I'm putting some downward pressure on it so it'll hold that position. When we're done, we'll see exactly how curved it is. Also, we'll, we will be able to modify it if we want to. I'd always try and err on the side of letting it solidify first and then correcting it later, since if you remove the, the weight too early, you're going to have this problem where it's going to want to uh, resume its round shape and straight, so you'll lose some of the, the shape that you were going for. Better, I think, just to correct it later. You can gently heat it and then gently shape it, but again, it's up to you. You can do whatever you like, and if you don't want a perfectly flat blade, that's fine. I mean, heck, take a look at the original tomahawk I had. It wasn't very much to look at, as far as I'm concerned right now, but at the time it was good, and it still would have been a fine Halloween costume prop, which is you know, one of the things it could have turned out to be. Great. I think you might have seen that. But here we go, just another minute. We'll be able to take this off and you'll see. <clears throat> the real trick is going to be how we get all of these pieces together. Basically, I'm going to saw the backs so that they line up and they're nice and straight. I'm going to glue them together. Then I'm going to probably thin the ends and heat sections of the blade portion that I'm making here and insert the ends into the blade portion. 
In other words, I'm going to put the outside of the back parts of the, the axe head into the f inside of the front part, if that makes any sense. Okay, I'm just going to run this under some cold water. And by the way, if you were planning on making a shamshar or a curved dagger or any such thing, that's the same way you do it. You just curve it before you flatten it, and then you flatten it in the curved uh, state. That's really all there is to it. You can also, when it's semi-plastic, go ahead and apply pressure to it, and you can deform it a little bit. So just for an example, here's the blade right there, right there, and right there. Not bad, huh? Very good. So let's get about to actually putting these things together now. That'll be something we'll do in the garage. So let's go on out and work on that now. Welcome back. Here we have the three components for the blade of the Assassin's Creed style tomahawk. The rear portions that form the, the legs of the A and then the blade itself. I've gone ahead and I've cut slots, which you saw with the starting off with the X-Acto knife. Then I widened them a little bit with a file, sandpapered them out. Now we're going to heat them. And having tapered these pieces, we're going to try and force them in. We're going to see how that works. We may need to do some adjustments, but that's going to be the basic idea. We're going to force them in and ultimately glue these two pieces together. And then all three of them together. Let's give it a start and just see what happens. Okay, let's take one of these. Just Very good. That's almost perfect, almost exactly what I wanted to happen. Now let's do the same on this side, and let's just see what ultimate angle we'll need. Yeah, this is going to look really cool. So then I'm going to take this out, we'll glue it in. This is going to be slick. And you saw how quickly that heated up, right? This is a thin, it's just a half inch Schedule 4 PVC, and you're only focusing on one section. So yeah, it heats up really quickly. It's almost ready right now. You can see it start to pucker. Once it puckers, that means it's ready. Sorry if I keep bumping the camera. Okay, now we're just going to try and force it in there. There you go. Now all I'm going to do is sand this down a tiny bit right here to force them together a little tighter, a little differently. But basically that's it. Then I can go over, glue these in, sand this area down, but really it's not offensive at all. This is almost perfect. This is looking really good. I'm very happy with it. Okay, till the next part. All right, YouTube. Now here, let's just go and finish up the handle, the haft section of the the tomahawk. This was the original one that I made with the leather strip. Since I'm, I used that for another project, it was seems to be a shame to waste it on something like this, which I don't really feel was all that impressive. But what you can do is use it as a model here. Basically, we're just going to be heating the middle section here, and we want to curve it back and then forward, or forward and then back. You just do whatever ever you like. So let's go ahead and do that right now.
Looks like we're actually pretty much done. I like that. What do you think? Matches up fairly well to the, uh, the haft in the original. If you want, you can heat it more in a different way. Again, this is really just all about you. If you're really trying to re replicate the Assassin's Creed Tomahawk, go and take a look. I'll try and post a link in the notes down below to an example where you can use to, to you know, replicate it as, as closely and with as much fidelity as possible. I'm not that interested in perfect fidelity as just the feel, the look feel, and just having fun, which I think most of us are. So now, we have our basically finished tomahawk hafting. We have up here a section which I marked preliminarily to cut out for the back part of the tomahawk blade. So let's go ahead right now and heat this area locally as much as we can and then I will try and slice it out with the nice new fresh and super sharp exacto knife. All right. Remember it's all right here on this one side. We don't want to heat the sides, we don't want to heat anything else. Incidentally you're going to, but it's not that big of a deal. Just focus your heat here. If you notice it's starting to turn nutty or brown or blonde, then you're going to want to stop heating it. Definitely don't breathe the fumes, it's not healthy. Okay, you can also see the texture on it, it's a little shinier there. Believe me, that means it is soft, very, very hot. So let's just go in and make a cut or two. We're ultimately going to want a wider cut than this, but this is a start. Again, we're just going to make one cut of the front and one of the back to help us align things, get everything all sorted out and proper. Once we're comfortable with where everything is located, we can widen the cut, sand them out, do whatever we need to do. There we go. So that's a good entry slot. As you see, Yep, it'll fit just fine, but now we need to go and do the same on the back side. So I like to, just to cool it off without water or anything like that, if you want to speed it up, just wave it around. A little bit of air moving over it will help to cool it faster. But since we're going to be applying heat to the side opposite, it's probably going to stay fairly warm anyway. I'm not too concerned about that. It's not going to be a problem. We're just going to want to heat side opposite like so until you make a matching hole on this side once we insert it again we can adjust the size of the holes we can do all that typically the one in the front you're going to want to be larger because you see how the blade tapers Yeah, this whole section is soft. That's okay. So here it is. One way I like to make sure that I'm going straight through it, start from your original side. See? Now I've poked right through. That gives you a place to start on the other side.
typically the easiest way to do this is to make two parallel cuts and then join them like I did on this side. If you're trying to widen it out, the material buckles. And so you'll have more problems. Just be very careful, especially since these blades can be exceedingly sharp. And this one, the replacement blade that I put in, definitely is. Okay. Let's get a little bit more over on the other side right here. Can we snip it? Yes, we can. There we go. Large hole, small hole. And just for a good measure, let's heat it up and insert it and just see how much more we need to change. Yeah, look how much nicer that looks when I made two parallel cuts rather than that, which was a slice trying to round it off. That's a, a bad idea, generally speaking. Well, there you go. That's pretty good. All I want to do now is flatten it a little bit, so as it's cooling. Ultimately, I'm going to pull the whole blade out because we still have to glue everything. I have to flatten the tip of the, the haft here. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it is being done and the work's looking good. Yeah, for now, let's just hold that on there. It'll cool. You see it taking shape, huh? Ultimately, it's going to just be a few more steps of gluing, prepping, finishing. We're going to sand this and do a much nicer wood grain than we did here. I'll show you a great technique for bringing out the color in layers. All right. I'm going to say that's done, that's ready. Now we can go ahead, sand this down, file it down, get them nice and smooth, do the same thing to the ends. We'll get everything all ready to put together, and really, that's that's about it. So thanks for watching. Check back in a little bit, and we'll do some more work. All right, we have the hafting here now. I have some black shoe polish, and over there in the corner, I have some brown shoe polish. I've sanded this down. I've also gone and flattened both the ends, rounded them, ground them down, sanded them down a bit. So they're all ready. For this portion, to make it look like it's made of wood, start with a base coat of black. Push down to get it to flow. And then just apply it liberally. You want to focus on the edge to make sure you can get it into all the cracks and crevices. Look at that. If you go back and forth, you'll leave little marks and things that could look like rings or just again, see how I, if I rock like this, you see how that creates a, the appearance of a growth ring. If you go flat and lift off, it looks a little different. If you rock back and lift off, it can look like the node of bamboo. So you can just do whatever you like to create the right effect. In this case, I'm just making normal looking wood. Really, you should probably do this in two steps so you can wait for it to dry and then do the other half. But this is just for the sake of the demo here. We're going to be just finishing it up. So now, that's it. We're going to let it dry completely now. So I'll go ahead and set it here on the edge that's completely made of metal. With my little shelf here, my table. That way it won't stain anything. And we'll come back in a few minutes. It'll be all dry, then we can go ahead and apply the, the brown coat, and you'll see exactly how that looks. The two complement each other. Multiple layers of brown will look great on top of the black. So now that it's dry enough to handle, we can take some of our brown shoe polish and go over the top, just like so. 
Don't apply it too thickly or too heavily at first because again you want to create a layered effect and if it too much comes out all at once you'll start to remove some of the black instead of applying brown on top of it. So just take your time. You'll come back and do more layers later. I see like right here it's starting to rub off a little bit. What you can do is you can dab some heavily on there and then just very gently rub it over it and that'll help to blend. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and basically let it dry, do it again, do the bottom, and then we can take a look at it when it's done. You can see what you think. Welcome back, and now two minor details to attend to. First, closing off and shaping the tip and shaping the bottom. We're gonna go about that by heating both ends and then flattening them like so. If you have a hand clamp or a clamp, that can be used to great effect in this process. That really speeds things up and helps. Mine is misplaced at the moment, so we're gonna have to make do with a board, which is just as well, because it works just as well. I've already gone and sanded it, if you can see the texture here. So this is all ready for the next step, which is finishing. So now all we're doing is heating the end, not anything else. I even say e angle it away, so that way you're less likely that some of the air will splash back, so to speak, flow down the, the hafting and heat other areas. You really only want the, the terminal centimeter, maybe. For some styles of tomahawk, you could leave this open, and I think it would look pretty darn nice. All you'd have to do is uh, plug it. You can leave it unplugged, but I think it looks better like this. There we go. Give that another try. Perfect. So you see there? We're just flattening it. I'll even better yet put it off the edge so that way we can flatten it against this while maintaining uh, center right on the end there. All I'm going to do after I do this is take the coping saw and saw this round to make it look nice and uh, even. But again, if you prefer it square, go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the bottom side. Saw it off like I said, grind it down, sand it, and then we can get on to finishing and assembling. Because that's really where we're at. And in this stage, I'd like to conclude the whole process of making the tomahawk. As you can see, I both spray painted it, glued it all together. Not perfectly, but eh, passably so for now. Especially since most of this is going to be covered up within the actual hafting. And I took these little scallops out that finishes it off nicely and makes it look very, very nice. As you remember, we have the slot that it goes into. We also have a little bit of hot glue over here. What I was going to do was take the hot glue and make it permanently uh, insert it into the haft. So let's go ahead and try that now. The first thing I'm going to try is just inserting it naked, so to speak, without the hot glue. So far, so good. Okay. Now. Go. Come in the 
back and just pump it as full of hot glue as we can. This looks great. There we go. Now, another way of handling this is also to go around and spray paint this section silver with the rest of it. But for now, this is great. This is really what I wanted to do. I would take some a thin strip of leather, such as, oh, I don't know, this, and basically wrap from there to there, all the way up and down. We could do it right now with the hot glue. But just to make an example of it, wrap it all the way down. I've got some lovely beads that, you know, Native American style beadwork. I'd want a little bit more. But that's the, the uh, basic idea of it. If you wanted, you could hang feathers from it. It looks really, really awesome, if you ask me. So, if you've enjoyed this, please go ahead and like it or subscribe to me. And I'd love to just hear your guys' comments on this. If you have any thoughts, and if you'd like to see more, I know I've got so many requests, and I promise you guys, I am remembering them, and I am trying to work on them all. I've just got so many projects on my plate right now that is very challenging, and I appreciate your patience, and I appreciate your viewership. So thank you very much, and check back in for uh, whatever comes next.